So in segmentation, we divide the address space of a process into segments. And in paging, we divide the address space into pages. What's the difference between a segment and a page? Uh, the segment is uh, a segment is a piece of uh, memory that has a specific purpose and a specific meaning, like uh, you know the code segment, the data segment, uh, a segment for the stack, a segment for the heap. So each segment has a meaning or a purpose associated with it. While a page uh, doesn't have uh, doesn't have a meaning associated with it. So with paging, you just divide or slice the the, the block that the address space of a process into equal pieces that you call pages. So pages have equal sizes and segments have unequal sizes. Each segment may have a different size because each segment has a different uh, purpose and a different meaning. While paging is just a slicing. You just slice up the, uh, the, the address space of a process into equal uh, pieces. So, oh, oh. so we first talk about segmentation. And then we'll talk about paging. But at least now we know, you know the difference between segmentation and paging. At least we know that a segment has a meaning and uh, each segment may have a different size, while pages have the same sizes. So let's talk first about segmentation, then we'll talk about paging. So in segmentation, a program the other space of a process may be divided into multiple segments, one for the main program, one for the stack, one for the subroutines, one for uh, library, uh, library functions. And that's just an example. Uh, more abstractly, here is a process that consists of four different segments. Each segment has a different size and each segment has a different meaning or a different purpose. So in segmentation, we map these four segments into four blocks of memory, in physical memory. <coughs> and the good thing is that they don't have to be adjacent. They don't have to be in order. So that gives us a lot more flexibility than we had in contiguous memory allocation. So now we have a lot more flexibility. Each segment will be allocated separately and they don't have to be adjacent, they don't have to be in order, so any free block that fits a segment can be used for that segment. In order to implement this, we need, uh, we need hardware support for a segment table. And the segment table will do the mapping between uh, a segment-based address and a physical address. And what's a segment-based address? A segment-based address is an address that consists of a segment number and an offset with the uh, uh, OK, yeah, I think these are, uh, I should turn the volume down. Okay. So, uh, so these are, I think, emails uh, arriving. And in fact, I usually I turn off my uh, old uh, browser and everything before, but I forgot to do this today. So we have this music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, okay, so it's a segment-based address. We'll have a, a segment and a displacement. And in the segment table, uh, the segment table will have, uh, will be indexed by the segment number. So. The index within the segment table is the segment number. And each entry for each segment, each segment will have its own entry. And that entry will have a base and a limit. So the base is the start address of that segment. And the limit is, what do you think the limit is? So if for each segment, I need to keep the start address for that segment. <coughs> what else do I need to keep? The limit, what's the limit? What does that, what the, you? The, the amount of, uh, not, not the, it's not the correct way to word it, but like the amount of space that it has. That way if you go base plus limit, that's your, that's your ending point. 
Yeah, so it's just the length of the segment, or the size of the segment. Yeah. So the limit is just the segment length or the segment size. Uh, or it's the, it, it, it's the maximum <coughs> offset within that segment. So that's why when you have an address like uh, 3 and 100. I don't need this. So some people can't see this, I know that. So. And I don't think I need this anymore. Okay, so I have a, a segment-based address like 3 and 100. So this is the segment number. This is offset 100 within that segment. Now, if the segment size is 80, then I know that this address is an invalid address. Because this segment has a limit of 80, and this is out of bound. It, it's, go, it's going out of bound. OK, so this offset must be within the limit. So this segment table, you know, first I check, I, I check on the displacement. So D stands for displacement or offset, same thing. Offset or displacement. Um, I check, I compare it with the limit for that particular segment. And if, uh, if it's within the limit, I'm fine, no problem. If, it's, if it exceeds the limit, then I, uh, I crack. So that's, a, that, you know, that's an exception that will uh, trap to the operating system, and then the operating system will catch an out-of-bound memory access. Otherwise, if it passes, I just add the base to the uh, now, the base that I get from the segment table, so the base is the starting address for segment 3 in this example. So segment 3 will have a start address somewhere in memory, and this is what I get from the segment table. I add it to the offset, and then I will get the physical address. Okay? So this is just a textual description of what we have just said. So there's a segment table, there is a base, and there is a limit. And each address consists of a segment number and an offset.